Krishna rolling coverage on uh, Chandrayaan 3, which is slated to launch at 2.35 p.m. viewers uh, from Sri Harikota. So stay tuned with NewsX at that time because we will, of course, take you through the launch live on our screens. Joining us on this occasion is Dr. Catherine Nish. She's a senior scientist from Canada and she's also worked on missions such as the Cassini and Chandrayaan 1 as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Nish, for taking our time to speak to NewsX and join us on this momentous occasion. My first question to you, how crucial is the Chandrayaan mission for the world? That's a big question. Um, I mean, every time we explore the moon, we're getting new information. Uh, the moon is a whole world, right? And we've only been to, to a few places on it. And the place that Chandrayaan 3 is going to is not a place we've ever explored before. Um, so there's going to be a lot of new information there that we just don't have about the moon. I think people have this mistaken impression that because we sent astronauts to the moon, uh, we know everything there is to know about it. But that'd be like saying you, you went to um, you know, New York and now you know everything about the Earth. So we really do need to explore these different areas. And I'm really excited to see more about um, the area that Chandrayaan 3 is going to be exploring. Absolutely. And you've also worked, uh, Catherine, on previous Chandrayaan missions. Could you just tell us a little bit more about those? I was very fortunate to be a team member on the Forerunner radar on Chandrayaan 1 um, and its sister instrument, the Mini RF radar on the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. And it was just wonderful to see um, that data come back. I've also had the good fortune to work with the M cube data from Chandrayaan 1 and also the DFSR data from Chandrayaan 2. It's been really impressive to see the work that India has been doing in lunar research. And I'm excited to see this next step. And how are you exactly hoping that Chandrayaan 3 will change um, our understanding of the moon? Chandrayaan 3 is landing in this really interesting area. Um, it's near the South Pole, but not at the South Pole. That's covered in this really um, interesting smooth plains material that some people have hypothesized is due to the ejecta of very large impacts on the moon. Um, so these are impacts that happened billions of years ago and spread ejecta and different material all over the moon. Um, and so by going to this place, we might learn more about um, the origin of the moon and, and its, its early evolution um, in a way that we haven't had a chance to do in the past. So I'm excited to see more about uh, the chemistry and geology of this region and what that tells us about these early impact craters that happened on the moon billions of years ago. And what role do you think India will be playing in the global space sector? in the coming years? Well, you know, from what I've seen, uh, India has been doing a great job <clears throat> with um, planetary exploration. So I'm really excited to see where you all go next. I've been really impressed with the work that's been being done with the, the lunar radars. That's my area of expertise. Um, and so just, you know, having the ability to continue to collaborate with India and, and le learn more about the radar properties of other planets, I think is, is really exciting. So um, I would love to see more We'll see what's next from India. Absolutely. And how do you think the entry of the private sector uh, in the space, uh, you know, sectors will change its landscape? I'm not quite an expert in that, um, <clears throat> but but certainly I think for myself, space was was quite inspiring to me as a child, and so you know, getting. Um, people excited about space will help us, you know, train more scientists and engineers and help us tackle some of these problems uh, as we go forward. Actually, one thing that India is also participating in is the NISAR radar, which is an Earth orbiting radar. Um, and that's going to be really helpful as we try to understand our own world as, as the climate changes and, and, you know, all the impacts that that's going to have. So, um, you know, in both planetary exploration, but also Earth observing, I think India will play a large role there. Absolutely. And certain private companies, Catherine, have also successfully completed paid flights to space. So what are your thoughts on space tourism? You know, I, I don't even like getting on an airplane. So uh, I personally would not be interested in taking a, a rocket ship into space. But um, I think I think the important thing is just if people want to do that, you need to train them properly. We just don't want to see, you know, people getting hurt or any accidents happening. So um, 
if people are keen on that, I would just, you know, hope that the different world governments help them to get trained properly so they can enjoy their, their flight appropriately. Absolutely. That, that's a very pertinent point there. Sure. As I mentioned, I was always interested in... Right. And Catherine, how did you become a scientist? Could you please take us through your journey? Sure. As I mentioned, I was always interested in space-related um, activities as a child. I read a lot of science fiction, watched Star Trek, um, and it really inspired me um, so much so that uh, when I was a teenager, I actually had the opportunity to uh, go to Houston, Texas and, uh, and participate in the International Space School at Johnson Space Center and meet astronauts, and it was a really inspiring uh, opportunity. Um, so I eventually went on and got a degree in physics and astronomy. Um, another really important uh, highlight in my career was um, working at the Arecibo Radio Telescope in 2003 as an undergraduate, um, which sadly is now 20 years later has ceased to operate, which we're all pretty unhappy about. Um, but that really shaped my, my career going forward. And um, so uh, I was inspired to pursue planetary radar and um, that's how I got involved in Chandrayaan-1, you know, all those years later, working with the Forerunner radar um, and uh, at uh, Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab, um, which is still to this day operating the Mini-RF radar on LRO 14 years later. So it's really exciting to see how things have changed over the past 20 years. And of course, I mean, you know, you are now uh, a senior scientist, you're very established, Catherine. So where do you now draw your inspiration from? I like being an explorer. Um, planetary science is, is, a, is an area where you can, you know, seek out new worlds and new civilizations, as they say on uh, Star Trek. Well, I guess not civilizations. <laughs> Um, and and, and it's, it's kind of a way that you can be an explorer without ever leaving your living room even. Um, all of this data is, um, you know, sent back from space and archived by the different space agencies and you can, you can just look at it and explore new things and see new features that no one has ever seen before. Um, and I think it's really exciting to be able to make those discoveries, be the first person to learn something new about the universe. Absolutely. And before we let you go, Catherine, just, uh, you know, trying to understand your perspective uh, on a conversation that's going on. There's now, you know, a vision to sort of colonize Mars and the moon. But how distant do you think this dream really actually is for humans? I think it's, it's a long ways off if it ever happens. I think people forget how nice of a place Earth is to live. Um, everything is harder when you leave the Earth, even Antarctica, which is a really inhospitable place for humans to live. At least you can stand outside and breathe the air. That's not possible on the Moon or Mars. Um, the radiation environments are also extreme, um, which is not something we have to deal with on Earth. Um, so I think it's I think it's a tricky prospect that's going to be a lot harder than most people think. So I think our um, focus should be on making the Earth the best place to live because it is really unique in the universe and we want to protect it.